Now let us look at what we mean by the word property. Now we just had a short understanding of what we mean by right. Property is a form of regulation. And, and when it comes to intellectual property, we are talking about a form of regulation of creations that come out of the mind. Property can be either public property or private property. These are two broad classifications of property. For instance, public property is something which is held in common, what we call the commons, and private property is something which a person holds for himself individually. Now, to understand the concept of property, we need to take the analogy of land or landed property. Any landed property exists in time and space. You could go to a particular location and analyze or look at the land and see its boundaries and you will get a fair understanding of the limits of that land. Where does that, uh, the land, what are the boundaries of the land? Where are the boundaries uh, of the neighbor's land? And where it is, uh, where is the pathway that leads to the land? All these things can be ascertained in the physical world. For, so property is something that we understand as, especially pri private property, we understand it as something that can be differentiated from others' property and something which has, uh, which is capable of being distinguished from others' property. And this hallmark of property, that it, is, it can be distinguished from others', others property, comes from the limits of the property. In a land, in the case of the land, we call them the boundaries of the land. The boundaries can be ascertained physically by going to the location and measuring it or looking at it. If the boundaries are protected and it gives a much clearer view of what is the extent of the land. Land can be measured, it can be ascertained in numbers, we can compute it and we can say what is the extent of the land. Land is also, the title in a land also manifests itself in a piece of a document, what is what we call the deed or the sale deed by which a land is conveyed from one person to another. In a sale deed, typically, you would find towards the end of the sale deed, a portion of the sale deed, what we call the schedule. The schedule normally has the description of the land, the extent of it, and also the boundaries of it. As I said, in the case of a land, you can doubly be sure. You can be sure by looking at the document where the boundaries of the land are. You could also go and look into the property deed or the title deed and see what are the boundaries of the land. So two ways to check it. One, you could look physically and check the boundaries or you could look at the title deed and look for the boundaries of the property. Intellectual property does not exist in time and space like real property. As I said, because intellectual property deals with creations of the mind like an invention or an idea or an expression of an idea, we need to have some form by which we can ascertain the limits of property. When a person comes up with an invention, the invention could be improvement in an internal combustion engine. That could be an invention. The improvement rests inside the engine. It is not possible for a person who sees the engine from outside to ascertain where the invention is or which part of the improvement actually makes the engine better. Unless it is described in detail, in writing, it will be very hard for a person to understand the improvement in the engine unless he analyzes it or he breaks it down or he reverse engineers it. It will be very hard for that person to understand where the contribution is with regard to that particular invention. So though there is an improvement that the inventor has made with regard to the internal combustion engine, it will be very difficult for people to ascertain where that improvement is unless the inventor himself tells the world as to what was the contribution that he made. In patent law, every invention needs to be described in writing. The descriptive part of the invention is contained in a document what we call the patent specification. And the patent specification, much like the land deed, would convey the details about the property and would end with something what we call the claims. The claims will demarcate the boundaries of the intellectual property when it comes to a patent right. So you could look at a patent specification 
and the last portion or the concluding portion of a patent specification is what we call a claim or many claims. It could be a multitude of claims or it could be a single claim. And these claims, when you read, will give you an understanding of what are the boundaries of the property, what are the limits of the property. By property, we understand as something that can be possessed and something that can be transferred. We also understand property as something that has boundaries, which makes it possible for you to distinguish your property from another person's property. Take a pen for instance. The pen has a boundary in time and space. And the fact that pens are possessed by people, we don't have title disputes with regard to ownership of pens. Assume a scenario where you and your friend have a small tussle with an ownership of a pen. How are we going to settle this ownership dispute? Now, if your friend is smart enough, he could just pull up his pen, just open it up and say, you know, I'd written my name somewhere discreetly. He could show that and he could get away with it. He could say that's one way to prove ownership. You had given, put in a secret mark. The other way to prove ownership is mere possession. You could say that I've been possessing this for a long time. This is my pen. So it's hard to make a claim. Now, if your friend wants to really make a claim, he would come up with something called a bill showing that this pen is actually mine because I purchased this for consideration. He could produce a bill. Now, that may put you in a back step, in a, in, on, the, on the back foot. You may wonder whether he has a better title than you. Now, you could further circumvent that by saying that, no, this bill is fabricated or the bill does not correspond to this pen. Now, all these things are disputes with regard to title on the ownership of a pen. Now, eventually, let us assume that you convince your friend on the ownership of your pen. You could have complete possession, and, and once you clear it off, then you could have complete possession on ownership of the pen. Now, disputes with regard to property is normally settled in this way. You could either show possession for a long period, uninterrupted period of time, or you could bring evidence of title to show that a bill or a receipt or something of, uh, of a similar na nature to show that, or, or the fact that you received it as a gift from someone, someone else, you could show evidences by which you can claim, uh, claim title to a particular piece of property. Intellectual property, because it is not readily discernible, because the rights don't manifest itself in time and space in a tangible, on, on a tangible uh, form, we find it difficult to settle disputes on intellectual property rights. When it comes to patent, that is why we have a requirement of every invention to be expressed in writing, disclosed in great detail, differentiating itself with every other invention that went before it, which is close to it or proximate to it, and then explaining the contribution made by the invention, inventor with regard to what has gone before. What has gone before is generally refer, referred to by a term called the prior art. And then demonstrating what is the inventive contribution that he made. All this is done in the patent specification. And after the inventor distinguishes his invention from what has gone before, he claims as something to be his own property. That is what is contained, as I said, in the concluding part of the patent specification, what we call the claims. The claims are actually for what the protection is granted. The protection in a patent is confined to what is mentioned in the claims and not what is mentioned in the descriptive part of the patent specification. Now, so the proof of the existence of uh, intellectual property, if it is a patent, if it is an invention, then we would look at the patent specification, the document that encompasses it. Now, you may be wondering, so is it easy to get an intellectual property right? I just need to put everything in writing. That's not the case. If you put everything in writing, there is a scrutiny that is done by the patent office. In, in India, it is done by the Indian patent office. And only when you pass the tests that the Indian patent office will subject your written description to, will you be granted a patent, which, which will give you a title and a protection for a limited period of time, provided you keep it alive by paying the required fees.